Greetings, ladies and men gents, and welcome to this narration of the web series Beyond the Void, taken from Reddit. If you are new to the series, there is a playlist listed down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Joffy point of view. The corpses strewn about the spaceport, mangled and bloodied, were a poignant reminder of human nature. Wherever a group of them clashed, such destruction was the end result. I was trying to conceal my personal feelings, but it was growing more difficult by the minute. While Terrans were not an outward enemy of the Federation, they were enemies of peace. That was reason enough to dislike them. As I finally slumbered on the flagship, the sights of the past two days plagued my dreams. Dead humans, petrified in ways I didn't think possible, floating in a space-born tomb. Agony blasted on their ashen faces. I snapped awake, panting. None the more rested than when I closed my eyes. Why did fate but caution I to find that ghost ship? As lawful as it was to say, by a part of me felt that the human's calamity was a merit of their own meddling. Tampering with the scientific fields that should never be touched was bound to end in disaster. If it weren't for Gorsha's selfless altruism, misdirected at a lot of savages, I would have left the Terrans to do their own devices. That was usually the best decision for all parties. But I wasn't the type of person to leave my best friend alone, squaring off with horrors beyond comprehension. After narrow escaping with our lives, I hoped that I could talk some sense into him. We'd sacrifice enough. It was time to return home. With the Pisces under Terran control, the crisis should be averted anyways. Gosh! I tapped a paw on the door to his quarters and lingered by the entryway. Uh, can I come in? The only answer was silence, which earned an amused eye roll from me. The poor guy was probably too deep in slumber to be roused. I decided to let him rest up and consult him later. I would just poke my head in to make sure that he was all right. Odd, there was nobody in his room, or any indicators to suggest that he'd been at there at all. No belongings, wrinkles in his sheets, or mud tracked in on the tile. Perhaps Gorsh had fallen asleep elsewhere on the ship. I should try and track him down before panicking. But after wandering about the ship for half an hour, my mind leapt to grim conclusions. My best friend was absent from the mess hall, the med bay, and the armory too. Come to think of it, the last person I saw him was with General Rykov, that particularly human, had a dark history, with a lot of blood on the entire species of his hands. He was infamous for discharging abominable weapons in combat. I warned Gorsh not to befriend that scumbag, but of course, he didn't listen. I found Rykov's interest in my best friend strange, and perhaps a bit concerning. There was no logical reason for an officer to sidle up to a patrolman, Gorsh thought that the Terran general was acting out of concern, but I believe that that was a guise for his true motivation. If there were years of deceit where the Federation taught us anything, it was that humans were incredible actors. What if the humans had something nefarious in mind for Gorsh, either way, threw him from being emotionally unfit, or worse, roped him into some sort of interrogation? Maybe Rykov wanted to grill the patrolman for information, out of desperation, to save his own hide. If I had evidence that the Terrans had done something unsavory, maybe the Federation soldiers would assist. No matter how much leverage the Terran Union had in the current Senate, they wouldn't want a kidnapping criminal at the helm of the Galactic Forces. My paws scrambled towards Rykov's office of their own volition. The pale human was poring at the bags beneath his eyes, studying a series of papers. So our prisoner says the spaceport was a smuggling outfit, specialized in weapons, he summarized aloud. The Covian authorities had their pockets lined, quite unhandsomely. It's incredible that a truckload of human mercenaries didn't draw any attention from the locals. Barging into his office and demanding, What did you do with my friend? Probably wasn't the best recourse. This required a diplomatic approach. Hopefully, the general's actions would give me some inkling to his knowledge. I knocked on the exterior wall and forced myself to salute in the human way. What is it? The general growled, an irritated glint in his eyes. I don't think I'll be of help. Try General Blez. Pardon me, sir. I forced a casual smile on my face, noting how Rykov's posture went rigid as he recognized me. It was as though he knew what I said about humans, away from prying ears. I just, uh, do you know where Gorsh is? I, I can't find him anyway. I sent him to rest. He should be in his quarters, as you should you, the human replied. He's not there. I haven't seen him since... Since he spoke to you, I wanted to say. Since the end of the battle. Maybe he got lost. Our ship's designs aren't that straightforward as others in the Federation. I looked all over the place. 
All of the usual suspects. Well, I suppose you should keep looking, Joffy. Please, sir. I'm begging for your help. If you care about Gorsh at all, he trusted you. You really want a human's help? It must be serious, then. Rykov tried to keep his expression passive, but his knitted eyes betrayed his concern. I reminded myself with a hint of annoyance how skilled they were at faking emotions. I'll send out a summons on the ship PA. Isn't that all? Anything you remember might help track him down, sir, I said carefully. Where did you last see Gorsh? He wandered off as we were securing the Pisces. The big guy looked sleep-deprived as hell, so I figured he'd crashed on the ship. That's, that's a start. Would it be okay if I assemble a Federation search party? I'd feel better if we sweep that area for signs of trouble. There were soldiers everywhere. I don't see how anything could have gone unnoticed. The human ran a hand through his hair, revealing a few hints of grey in his outer lobe. But very well. I'll get General Blairs to put together a search party and meet us in the hangar bay. Us? I echoed. Yes, I'll help you look. Like you said, Gorsh is my friend, too. I didn't want General Rykov to tag along and interfere with our investigation. What if he was coming to make sure that we didn't stumble across anything? This was the last opportunity to cover up any human misdeeds. But how could I say that without revealing my suspicions of Terran involvement? Uh, Thank you, sir, I sighed. The human dipped his head, slipping his navy jacket onto his shoulders. Grime was smeared on the shoulder cuffs from the battle, but the medals clipped to his chest still sparkled. The uniform made him appear regal and authoritative. As we sped down the ship's corridors, it was strange how the most dangerous species in the galaxy was so unassuming and noble to the eyes. Rykov stifled a yawn as we stopped by the Pisces, and my nerves grew unsettled. There was no sign of the Federation soldiers who were allegedly on their way. For a ship that was so tied up in interdimensional madness, I found it odd that no soldiers were posted around it. I didn't hear the Terrans order two sentries to keep watch at all times. Either someone was shirking their duties, or the general cleared out potential witnesses. As those thoughts crossed my mind, an exterior door swung open. A wiry human entered the hangar bay, clad in black military gear that was several sizes too large. He carried only an aged pistol rather than the Terran standard issue plasma rifle. Perhaps it was a preconceived notions, but the rascal didn't look the part of a trained killer. I mean, every few steps he was pushing his helmet off of his eyes. Don't salute officers anymore, boy, Rykov hissed in a dangerously low tone. The scrawny figure pressed a hand to his head. So, so, sorry, I zoned out. Sorry, sir. The general's expression radiated suspicion, and his arm inched towards his hip. Who are you? I don't recognize you. Uh, I'm uh, Pr- Private Marino. I- I'm new, sir. Your name doesn't sound familiar at all. What were you doing out there, anyways? Uh, having a smoke, sir, the man replied. General Rykov drew his firearm in a heartbeat. Bullcrap! Get on the ground! What did I say? Smoking has been prohibited in the military for a century. You daft fool. If you were doing it, you wouldn't tell me. Marino, if that was his real name, bolted towards the door. I didn't know what was the involvement was, but he must know something about Gorsh's disappearance. We couldn't let him escape. Suddenly, I was glad to have Rykov present after all. The human soldiers were excellent at tracking targets and making snap decisions under duress. I was worried to see Rykov lining Marino up in his pistol, however. We needed the guy for questioning, not as a corpse or an autopsy. The general's finger depressed the trigger and a loud crack split the air. The intruder stumbled with a yelp, clutching his leg. The plasma bolt through the kneecap wasn't lethal, but it did leave the target crippled. Marino fired a few wild shots in our direction, which missed their mark. I dropped to the floor, not wanting to risk a lucky hit. Rykov shrank back as well, barking several curses. His jam pistol left him unable to return fire. Surely, the general would try and keep the intruder cornered until backup arrived. It was logical, risk-averse decision. Our opponent crawled behind a shipping crate, grunting in pain. General Rykov took a retreat as an invitation to charge, a clear sign of human derangement. If Marina reacted quick enough, the general could be taken out of point-blank range. My heart skipped a beat as Rykov scaled the crate, then lunged at his target from above. The aerial ambush caught Marina by surprise, and the gun slipped out of his grasp. The two Terrans rolled about from behind the container, locked in a frantic tussle. Rykov 
pinned the smaller guy and started to choke him out. The human, with its oxygen supply cut off, was like a fish out of water, blading about. A desperate punch connected with the general's face, but his stranglehold didn't slacken. What in the stars is going on? A grubbly voice asked behind me. General Blaise entered the hangar bay, accompanied by five Federation soldiers. I could imagine the ill-tempered Jatari's bewilderment. It must appear like Rykov was asphyxiating one of his own soldiers, a young, weaker fellow at that. Now the human's crazed expression, and one might assume that he had a nervous breakdown. That guy's Marina. He's dressed up as a Terran soldier for some reason, but I don't think he is one, I answered. He tried to flee when we caught him, and Rykov is trying to take him out. A flash of silver caught my eye, and Marina fished out an object out of his pocket. Rykov didn't notice until the blade slashed against his cheek. The officer recoiled slightly, giving his opponent a chance to land a knee to the stomach. The Terran war criminal tumbled back, cupping his hand to his face. Bright red trickled between his fingers, and rolled across his knuckles in rivulets. That wound must be deep enough to require stitches. General Blez gestured to his team. The Federation soldiers rounded on Marino, hollering at him to drop his weapon. Surrounded and outnumbered, the human intruder released the knife. I was relieved to see him alive and in Federation custody. Thanks, guys, Rykov panted, staggering to his feet. Take this one to the brig. The general dropped a hand from his face and a chill raced down my spine. The Federation soldiers gaped in open horror as the same realization dawned on them. Even General Blaise looked shaken. Rykov blinked in confusion. Why are you all looking at me like that? The scar you have, I muttered, when they, uh, when they found you dead. The human traced a finger across his right cheek, eating the gaseous shape. His expression morphed into a deep frown. Touch revealed a familiar pattern, as well as any mirror. Perhaps, for all of our efforts, we hadn't altered the future at all. End of chapter. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it, click. With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just quickly want to thank the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia Barkey, Ken Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Albard and Gusta, Arcadian, Lord Azrakal, and Joe Kumbaka.